the video podcast that keeps you in the mix of everything real estate. I'm Noel Fryson with the Center for Real Estate Education, and we have our power panel here today. First, we have Eric Anderson, CEO of Alexander Anderson Real Estate Group. We have Adam Sperber, VP of Residential Real Estate for Alexander Anderson Real Estate Group. We have Omar Sharif, VP of Alexander Anderson Capital Group. And as always, we have Nima Mary, Managing Director. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Managing Director from a Mary Law Firm. And we have a special, special, special guest today. We have Lauren Sella. Hi, Lauren. Who is the VP? Oh no, who's the senior uh, loan consultant? Everyone else is a VP. I'm that was the like, VP. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel like I, sh- I want to be a VP now too. Yeah, I'm the VP of mortgages. Period. Yeah. She's this, and you guys really need to know this because she's the senior loan consultant at New American Funding. And today we are going to be talking about money. 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 Better have money. More money. Yes. We're going to be talking about. Thank yeah. you. My mom's yeah. an opera American Idol material. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be talking about mortgages, credit, interest rates, inflation, and what you need to know. So, let's start this off with Lauren. So, mortgages. How do we get a mortgage? What a mortgage are we looking for? Do we Go. want a mortgage? The most important thing, in my opinion, is credit. Credit is <coughs> credit can make you or break you. The better your credit is, the better your financing is. Obviously, you know, you need to have a debt to income ratio that's okay. You need to have a job. I've had people come to me and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm on unemployment, but I, I pay my rent. You need a job. So. <laughs> oh, God. They're not getting a mortgage. <laughs> you should have put it on that side so, of the yeah, table. So, yeah, so, so uh, mortgage is 101. You need a job. You need an income. Um, and uh, credit, obviously, so, so, so important. Um, Break it down. Tell us about what credit score you should have. The best credit score is an 800 FICO score. Um, not many people have 800 FICO scores. Um, we have a lot of different things that we can do to help um, increase FICO scores to get better financing. If someone has a rate in the... 670 range. To me, I see that as we've got 10 points. Should he hit the buzzer? (laughs) I'm actually thinking, right, before you give away the secret sauce, should we at least offer four easy payments of (laughs) (laughs) $19.99? Subscribe now. (laughs) Subscribe now. So, yes. As seen on podcasts. To me, to my personal opinion, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm not going to say exactly how many because... Well, you're only 21. Right, exactly. Yeah. I started when I was five. Right. Um, I think credit is, is the most important thing because if you don't have a certain FICO score, you, you're not getting a mortgage. Okay. What's if, the lowest FICO score to get a mortgage? 580. Hmm. And 580 is going to be very tough. You have to have a lot of compensating factors for that to go through. And like with height, it, like, speed, agility... Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, reserves, mm-hmm. assets, um, uh, uh, job longe- longevity. Um, so the unemployed guy's set. Does your down payment affect that if you put down Absolutely. 50% and you have Absolutely. a 580? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. With a 580, we're talking straight FHA. There's no way you're going to get a conventional loan with a 580. All right. So, so what's the lowest conventional loan, right? Um, probably 660, but if you are not, I mean, it could be lower if you're putting down a decent amount of money. All right, so hold on. Putting, so hold okay. on. Let's just, let's just break this down into segments. So let's tell, tell the credit score range goes from X to Y. So first, let's do that. So I've seen it. FICO scores uh, as low as 400. So 400 really? with a top How do you get score. A FICO of, score? You just you've don't pay never any paid I feel like you got to walk backwards. Yeah. You've never paid anything. Because I know Adam probably has the top score here at this table. So. 804. He's at a 900. Actually, actually 90 is a 400. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go up to 900? Um, in the 800s. All right. So like, a- like anything. 400 any- to 800 yes. something. What's yes. the top tier, though? What a- would- anything over. I mean, 800 is, is golden. Okay. So over 800, it's zero interest. Exactly. exactly. Really? And then when you get no. to 900, no. uh, like I pay you. There you go. So, Adam, I think to your question, what's a top tier? Because they're divided in tiers, right? 
Yes. Would it be what, like seven forty? It was like seven forty, seven fifty. So yeah. it depends on it, it's it depends on the type of mortgage because okay. something that's really important with the credit scores is mortgage insurance. So when you don't have that twenty percent down, your mortgage, which a lot of people don't know, right. it's an abstract abstract concept to them. You are paying mortgage insurance, and the lower your FICO score the higher your mortgage insurance. And sometimes that's... So, I don't mean to interrupt you, but guys, that's PMI. PMI. So, you, what you will commonly see on your applications and everything else is PMI. It's PMI or MIP, depending on the, the, the loan program. PIG. So, so we, yeah. have our, we have our breakdown, so it's 400 to 8 something. Oh, you know. Now let's just <laughs> get out there the types of mortgages. Well, the, so, well, so we I, get the basis, and then you can go into each piece. Well, the, the thing with... The, the mortgage insurance that people don't understand how important your credit score is, sometimes it's more important than the, than the, um, the interest rate. When you look at, when you stop and really, if somebody that knows what they're doing stops and explains this is what your payment is going to be, let's not even talk about your interest rate because your mortgage insurance is so high. We, gotta, we have to do something about that. We have to work so, on but that. But mortgage insurance is only required if you have less than 20% down. Or if, you're, or if you have an FHA loan. FHA always requires. Okay, so let's just tell everybody the types of loans that are out there. Okay. So we have conventional. Conventional, Fr Fannie Freddie. Fannie Freddie. VA. VA. For, US for veterans. For yeah. veterans. Uh, the VA is a, a fantastic loan. It's like, to me, I think it's one of the, the, the last few things that we do for our veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's a fantastic loan. 100% financing with no mortgage insurance. Hmm. Thank you for your service. Minimal credit score? Yeah. Uh, or that gets thrown out the window? There's some, some leniency. Okay. There's leniency with a VA loan and for a credit score and for debt to income ratio. I've had veterans approved at a 68 back end, which is unheard of. Okay, well, we're gonna get we're gonna yes. get to that, but no, hold on. Sounds so, like a Chevy. I have a question about yeah. the VA loan. With the VA loan though, you told me that <clears throat> if you're getting the house with someone, you must be married. If you they if want you to be in the whole have matrimony. Be, exactly. A, no a veteran partners. A veteran cannot be on a loan with anyone else but their um, spouse. Okay. So <laughs> I have had people get married. <laughs> Ladies, it's a way to get into the <laughs> yes. altar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what, what about me? Right. <laughs> <Right. Right. Right. laughs> yeah. Women in the armed services. Yeah. <laughs> So we have conventional, we have VA, we have USDA, USDA, which is, which is agriculture. Yes. So if you farm have a farm, I was like, is that the B? Okay, so again, <laughs> FHA, USDA, conventional, VA. What else do we got? Non-conforming. Non-conforming. Non-conforming is coming back. It's uh, it, it's that gray area where, um, let's say for instance, someone's self-employed and they make the money. They make we know they make the money, but they decide with their accountant to be creative and pay as little taxes as possible. And that's what everyone wants to do, obviously. Nobody. Sure. <laughs> that's un American. <laughs> the, you know, the, the write offs and different things, different expenses. Um, people tend to obviously try to get their taxable income down as low as possible. So mostly self employed people have that mostly challenge self or opportunity. People. Yeah, but back in the day, before the mortgage meltdown, the the industry standard was anybody can do that. Choice. A W two employee can do, and that's why that's one of the the um, uh, the factors that led to the mortgage meltdown because we were stating income for W two employees. Now, a self employed borrower, common sense, a self employed borrower, we know we know they make the money. You could see it on their bank statements; they make the money. Right, it makes sense. So but a W two employee that's straight W two, and we like. Right. We were literally like stating whatever it was, so and it was legal. Stated, stating whatever not, they needed. Is non-conforming loan the same as a stated income loan? It, it falls under the same umbrella. Non -conforming. How, how is that legal if you're making right. up their income? Right. Uh, you know up. what? Honest, honestly, no. They're, they're taking their W two, so they're saying even with W twos, they would just state income, whatever the income they needed, right? So if we're stating whatever income they needed, which is different than the W two. I am one. Don't worry, of limitation is long gone. So the I'm question the is, could you lie back then? Back then. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, did people did, lie? Absolutely. Whoa. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And that like led to, but it was legal. It was like, and that's like, 
it was crazy to me because like let's think about it we're setting ourselves up for failure how is somebody that makes a cert a fixed amount is that why the real housewives guy went to jail i don't, I don't think the federal well, government I think thought they it was... lied on their things no of their income falsify documents. no if you can't falsify documents uh. falsifying your tax returns is jail that's big that's different that's federal but people were doing that as well Ooh. so you can lie about your income back I mean, then not not anymore back then <laughs> But you could always lie. Let's and then, and we were that. also doing 100% financing. It was okay. the wild, wild west, and it needed to stop. And and things have gotten a lot better, but slowly some things that are necessary for a self-employed borrower, a stated income, or a bank statement program is is necessary. I think it's Hilly. great. Hilly has a question. Yep. She says, hi, Lauren. Love money. So, hey, um, we all love money. <laughs> is there Not something specifically for first time home buyers? Yes. There are several different programs. Um, there are grants. Um, one of my favorite programs right now for first time home buyers is uh, a conventional loan with 3% down. And there's an income limit, but there are. Um, what do you mean income limit? Like if you make so much money, you can't get that loan? Correct. Discrimination against the rich. So be. for rich a comment like that, I got you something specifically, <laughs> Nima. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I'm not trying to get sued by Hot 97, but I played <laughs> myself. Scrooge <laughs> McDuck. You're Scrooge McDuck plush. Oh, yeah. Scrooge <laughs> thinks that that is an inappropriate discriminatory <laughs> law. And we anyway. should have 3% money, too. <laughs> I don't. I don't make the rules. I just. Oh, I don't and think he's they... supporting numerous grandchildren, right? There's a three little ducks he, running yeah, around. He does. He's doing a duck single yeah. dad. It's a very difficult <laughs> life for Scrooge. But there is a five percent option for the rich, right? Yes. Right. What's a five percent so, option for? It's the offered rich? by the Eric Anderson Capital Convention. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about so five percent down, yeah. It's conventional. Is is anybody can do the five percent down, the three, <clears throat> and anyone can do the three percent down. Obviously, it's a more. It's a you know. It's a higher risk. For the lender, mm -hmm. so there are some stipulations. Like, does, does PMI get involved with that? Yes, and it's going to be higher because it's a higher risk. The higher your loan to value, the higher your PMI. So let's just talk about PMI for one yep. second. So we've all established there's like five different loans, and I think one of the things we want to do here is maybe go over some examples of how some of the panel has actually used these loans because I can name a few how they've helped me. But before we get there. PMI, like everybody gets what it is. They understand it's below 20%. They're paying a premium or an insurance policy actually for the bank. Correct. How much does that translate to? Because like if it's $10, I don't really care about $10. See, that's what is it $2,000? Like how do you judge that? It's all relative. The lower your FICO score, the higher your premium. Hmm. The higher your FICO score, the lower your premium. Okay. And the program that I was just talking about for the 3% down, if you make under... I, you know, every county is different, but I think it's like 77,000, 70 something. If you make under that, you get a reduced mortgage insurance rate. All right, so I make under 77,000. Yep. I'm buying a $500,000 house. I'm putting down 3%. What's my PMI cost? My FICO score is <coughs> 620. 20. All right, 650. No. 680. I got to be a 680. Well, so. It's not an exact science. I know. Just give us the concept of where. So five hundred. Thousand uh, dollars a month. No. Five hundred. Couple hundred. Couple hundred. Right? Couple hundred. So like four hundred bucks yeah. a month. Probably less. All right. So do you use that extra four hundred now becomes part of your payment, right? Correct. So you have to that now adds on top of everything because you're also Absolutely. getting a higher interest problem. Right? Absolutely. So that's gonna go towards your debt to income ratio. This Absolutely. Is so awesome. Okay. Um, so I think just to get to to give perspective. <laughs> Just quickly explain what debt to income ratio is okay. and get everybody like a comfortable with how that works. Okay. So a very, very simple, a simple uh, explanation. Um, the amount of money that you bring in every month, be it $4,000 every month is that's what you bring in before taxes. So that means you make $48,000 a year, $4,000. You have a mortgage payment of a thousand dollars and no other debts. That would mean that your debt to income ratio is twenty five percent. Because, what well, you're gonna say something? I was gonna say so. Well, with, with a conventional loan, because I know there's a difference between FHA and conventional as oh. to what your debt to income could be. So with a conventional loan ballpark, what 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 do they allow? They, they want 
they want it to be 45, but you can do between- 45%. Yeah, they want it to be forty five percent. Okay. <laughs> but they want but you can I can do between forty five and fifty. Fifty being the max for conventional, provided there are compensating factors. The credit is great, the, the debt to income is low. Um, so what goes into your debt to income? Okay. So Good I question. mean does yeah. like do, does your cable bill go into no. that? Okay, so everything that shows up on your credit report, your student loans. Your audit mm, student loans. Mm mm. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's like, uh, that, that bugs the crap out of me. These poor kids are coming out well, yeah. with ridiculous amounts, and we have to count 1%. Like, because it, it, it could be like they're not paying anything, and they got to put a payment to, in there. Okay. So, student loans, what else? Can I ask you a question on yeah. that? Yeah. So, you're saying these poor kids, right? And I'm I actually think that there is a issue with this whole student loan crisis. We're not talking about that. No, no, but just an, an just honest question, right? Because they're poor kids. But they chose but to go to school ready. and take the loan out. Why don't you see the bigger problem with the institution of colleges dictating, you know, what their fees are and what their costs are? And if their costs are relevant because they have to hire qualified professors to give you a better form of education, why is the student loan issue a crisis? So that like, is a very relevant, I mean, not relevant, that's a very important thing in our society. How about the president waving <laughs> the payments, but, but these are not appropriate. Can that happen? I've been, I've been, I've been waiting for more. Let's go back. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say these poor kids is because when I, when I was a kid and I was going to school, I could afford my my student loan payments. It made sense. But they're coming out with they're coming a out with, with three and four hundred thousand dollars in debt, and they're behind, they're just behind, like just, it's just but, but that's ridiculous. Well, but, have you ever thought about that before you went to the polls? Because it's the government who backs these loans that they go out and give out at 9% interest. So when, have you ever called your congressman and said, hey, why are you guys promoting a system designed to... Yeah, I'm out there every day. That's what. That's the first thing I do. Okay, my 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 I wake up morning. <laughs> is get your loan approved first. <laughs> then go to college. Then go to college. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sally, Sally has a quick question. What's up, Sally? Hey, everyone. For 1099 for self-employed, are the lenders looking for gross or net income? Mm. Net. Net. Because net. a 1099 employee, you kind of can look at like <clears throat> self-employed because right. there's no taxes coming out. Right. So when they have the 1099, they go to the account or they do their own. The, the 1099, and then they write everything off. And what the bottom line is what we can use for income. Thank you. Okay, so That's yet again, Nima needs ice. All right, <laughs> uh, this whole no ice thing. See the little Scrooge McDuck there? That's something that Mr. McDuck would so have done. Thank you very there's much. There's a theme here. Whatever and what, one's for Eric, so you can't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't throw it anyway. <laughs> you got yelled at last time? Oh, look, apparently now that there's ice, everybody's <laughs> Everyone interested. Wants ice. Everybody's Everybody's yeah. interested in the ice. Cool. <laughs> but all right, let's, wrap, let's bring this back. So Noel had asked, how do you go through the debt to the okay. debt ratio? So what counts? What doesn't count? Right. Okay, so Just your, breeze us so through that. Real quickly, your front ratio is your housing expense. Your back ratio is every, your housing expense and everything else. So you've got a lease payment that's $500. You've got um, uh, uh, credit cards that are five hundred dollars minimum payments. Now you get a thousand there. Your mortgage payment is two thousand. So we're at three thousand. Three thousand is your total monthly outlay. Whatever you bring in every month versus that is your debt to income ratio. Okay. So if we're so car we're, payments are in there. Car payments. So you, so I said like your lease is three. This five hundred. Your credit card minimum payments five hundred, and your mortgage is going to be two thousand. Health insurance or car insurance? No. Okay. So only things that report on your credit report. Utilities no. Exclusive of alimony and child support. They don't show on your credit, but they are. But they come out. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But also counted in your favor if you receive them. So it's cheaper to keep her. So the more, <laughs> so the more, the more I've debt heard you that have. Several times. <laughs> the more debt you have, and then the, that helps determine what type of loan you can get. So yes. whether you can qualify for a four hundred thousand dollars house, exactly. six hundred thousand, or a million. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Summit wants to know: Can I take a hundred thousand loan from my four hundred one k for a first time home buyer? So can you can you pull the money for your down payment from your four hundred one k? I, I always ask people when they say they have absolutely no money: Do you have a four hundred one k? Because you can borrow from yourself with, first of all, you can borrow from yourself without penalty. Second of all, 
that debt is not counted against you in your debt ratio because you're borrowing against yourself. Okay. So it's That's your good. money. Okay. So now I don't have to worry about adding that to the debt ratio. Some people say you should never borrow from your 401k. I say to each his own. Whatever. It's money. You can whatever. make I agree. It's all about your picture. Or what yes. Is your, you have what to pay you yourself mean? back you with interest. You have to pay yourself back yeah. with uh -huh. interest. Um, but it could be any interest, right? I think there's a it, no. It depends on what it's t like. It, I right it now, right now it's four and a quarter. Oh, wow! But it's pretty low, and you're actually paying yeah. yourself, so it's really not the worst right. scenario. If your goal is to get a house or to get a property, it's you have to really look at the big picture and figure out a way to get there. And uh, know your resources. A lot of people don't even know that that's some. I'm sorry, did I cut you off? Go ahead. No, no. Um, just wanna, I just want to mention that this is taking a loan against your 401k, not withdrawing the money for your 401k. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. I wouldn't say. Okay. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not. You're being the bank. You're yeah. lending yourself money. So yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. But don't think you have to pay it back in a certain amount of time? You typically, typically five years. Okay. So you're on a five-year plan, and most 401ks will allow you to borrow up to fifty percent of your vested value, mm -hmm. or fifty thousand, whichever is less. And so that you interest, you're getting that interest okay. in your pocket. Yes, you're paying. So like, if you're, out. if you're, if you have even for credit cards, if you owe a hundred thousand in credit yes. cards, and you can borrow. Yes. Against your four hundred one k to and pay I, your credit cards back at four percent instead of thirty, like it's and a there, so I've done that with people who have overextended themselves. It happens, you know. You just it they, it gets out of control. They're overextended. They want to buy a house or they want to refinance, and they're it's just like first of all, how are you making these payments? Is that true for an an IRA and those kind of things too? Can you borrow against that, or is it just four hundred one ks? Four hundred one ks, I'm positive about an IRA. I'm not going to speak to because okay. they're all different. All right, so everybody's got the gist of what a debt to income ratio is. Everybody's got the gist of the five different plans. Do we get that are. though? The debt ratio. We do. No. We, we do. do. We do. So, so two things I want to do. We're going to go through and give examples of some loan programs we, we've used. But before we do that, tell us what the craziest loan that you got approved. You're crazy. A I knew you were going to go there. Oh. <laughs> not, not my not personal loan. Okay. Oh my God. Let's, on let's delve our... into Adam's finances. Yeah, right? <laughs> my 400 credit score too. Okay. <laughs> but no, we had a we had an interesting one. Um, That's a euphemism. Yeah, uh, we both lost sleep and uh, you know started drinking over this one. It was a. I, I'll let you dive into it because you did you did all the grunt work when it came to the loan. I found them the house and negotiated the house, and then you made the magic happen. I don't even know what I did. <laughs> yeah. well, what, what was the situation? Um, well, we had a, we had a, um, three borrowers, one of whom was one of those, we all know those people that know everything about everything and won't I listen. Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> Less me. And won't listen to anything <laughs> and knows everything. This was his purchase. <laughs> and I, you know, well, we, you we know. both had to say, enough, stop it. Do you want help or don't you? Stop. Get out of your own way. And just it just seemed like what everything. Were there, what was the problem with them? Um, three borrowers. What were the credit? Three scores? borrowers. Um, I, I fixed the credit scores to be in the seven hundreds. I told okay. them. I gave them direction. So they started where? They started in the in the. One of them was in seven hundreds, and the other two were in the six hundreds. It was a jumbo loan. Mm -hmm. What is a jumbo it, loan? A jumbo loan is anything over conforming limits. Okay. Conforming is four seventeen. Uh, it used to be. Now it's six seventeen. Now it's six forty seven. I okay. think. So borrowed borrowed amount. Borrowed amount. Borrowed amount yeah. Six forty seven is not conforming. Okay. So you know, it, it was like what one one point two million. One, uh, uh, yeah, about one point two. One point two million. Okay. Mortgage no, actually, it was one point one point four. Okay. Purchase amount or mortgage amount? Purchase. Oh amount. no, purchase amount. And so how much were they putting down? Uh. They wanted to put nothing. <laughs> very little, very little. Okay. Yeah. So I think was it ended up being five. If that, yeah. I think it ended up being being five. They, five percent. Five percent. They had seventy five thousand dollars. They had no and money. The seller accepted that offer. We made it work. You yeah. made it work. They had no money. We, we made, made it, it work. We. If I was, that, was, uh, that was a team we, effort. Team absolutely. You, you, absolutely. You felt like the seller side. I was like, no, we can get this mortgage. Done. Absolutely. And it makes a big difference. Which I've done that, by the way. The it makes a huge offers, difference. I call the mortgage broker, and I'm like, "Don't bullshit me. Can they get the mortgage or not?" E even our own you attorney, know, even our own attorney, mm -hmm. at the end of it, after we closed, called us and said to Lauren, "I can't believe you got that done. I was, com I was convinced this was not going to work." Yeah, he was kind. The, atter the attorney was their attorney was kind of like dragging his feet because he was like, "There's no way." Right, nobody, so the nobody. House purchase was 1.2 million. 
They put down 5%. Okay, so there when you... There were three borrowers. You needed all three borrowers to qualify for the mortgage income. in general. Yes. Okay. They're, they're, they're self-employed. They they write everything everything off. Which it, in context, guys, is $60,000. 60000 on a $1.2 million mortgage. Okay, okay thank keep you. on going. So... Um, That's right. So, oh, they needed reserves. So for the, How much the program, do you need? well, this program, they needed 18 months of reserves. They did not have them. So after you put payment. your down payment, yes. you need to have that much in reserve. Yes. Okay. Let me know when this house goes to foreclosure. I'll try to pick it up on the cheap. <laughs> <laughs> we're already on that. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> way ahead of you. We're, we got our eye on that. Uh. So, um, so. I split it up into a first mortgage and a second mortgage. Okay. So that we could negate the need for 18 months because they didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I got, I got, you know, we got over the hurdle of this credit isn't good enough because you need to have a 700 FICO score to, to even to do this program. We got over that, got the scores where we needed them, propped them up, held hands to make sure that they stayed propped up mm -hmm. and kept their eye on the prize, see something shiny and, you know. Um, what that means is you, once she's working her magic, you can't use your credit cards. Yeah. Or, or you can't or buy a car. Don't go buy yeah. a car. Right? Don't buy furniture. Right. Don't buy furniture before you have the house. That's that's one of the things I can de definitely right. say. Do not buy furniture or you're going to live on your couch. Right. <laughs> sometimes. In sometimes, the street. <laughs> sometimes you're going to live on your couch. I hope it's a lovely couch. Um, so in the end, we split it up into a first and second so that we could um, avoid the need for the um, 18 months because I did a first at the high balance conforming limit was which I think it was 800 and so that loan for that, yeah. that size loan. Loan. and it. then a, and then a second so basically what you're hearing is that there's many different ways to yeah. to skin the cat or whatever to, to make something work and if you have someone that has the ability to know all these programs in their mind they can sometimes make things work that someone else couldn't so having that right mortgage broker having that right lawyer having that right agent really helps get a deal done so it's important and, to and you know and this is one of the things that if you brought this to you know any especially the big lenders any of these lenders mm -hmm. they would have told you there's no chance in hell that this is going to work out this is not going to happen so but lauren said if you do this 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 i'll make it work and she did so and, and big lender means a bank, Chase. Wells Fargo, yeah. Chase, Chase whatever. Bank, one of those That's groups. the purpose for a lot of these smaller well, right. Even beyond that, just a yeah. plug, plug for you. So a lot of you guys out there, before you start shopping, you, you the moment you start looking for a house, you start getting targeted advertisements, right? Just the way the internet works. Mortgage companies, get a rate, all these other websites, which I'm not trying to disparage them. Get a rate? Get, get, a, get a rate. Get a rate. You're like, is that a thing? No, it's a, it's a website. Yes, right? so no, yeah. All these websites. And when you guys go on them, and you see all these fancy numbers they put in the front, mm -hmm. and you end up with like someone that they just feed the business to, you know that in my experience, that's not doesn't really work out well for you. Most of those deals become shit shows. They go very mm -hmm. slowly and they're convoluted. But if you're in a situation where you have an agent, guys, ask your agent because whoever your agent recommends you to is someone that they've worked for in the past and that they're standing worked behind. With. Yeah, right. or worked, worked with, with yeah. right? Not for. Sorry, yeah. worked with. Yeah. Um, we have a grammar seminar uh, coming up after this for one hour <laughs> by Eric Anderson. <laughs> no, he's right. It's so worked with. And the reason for that is, look, your agent wants a deal to close as well. That's how they get compensated. Um, and they want the deal to close well. So if they tell you to use someone, know that they actually do have your best interests in mind because their best interests are vested with yours. If you can't get approved, if you don't get a good rate, if they can't work out these issues, right? The whole deal falls apart and your agent's time is wasted. So don't think that when your agent recommends people like a mortgage broker, he's doing it because there's something in it for him, right? What's in it for him is the deal closing to the best parameters for you. So these websites may be great, but don't rule out local or small shop mortgage brokers because they are creative. They have the experience and they've tested time. You know, time has tested them and they've proven that they're they're capable of getting this stuff done. But there's also there's also the other aspect of using like a local lender, somebody that you trust, that you work with. And we just had the situation a few months ago. So we have a, you know, we're representing a buyer and the seller was getting a little bit nervous about what was going on. And Lauren got on the phone with the seller, got on the phone with the other agent and had a discussion and explained the whole process. And even the seller said, wow, this is amazing. You 
totally put me put me at ease on this whole situation. What's going on? And we're actually closing that one today, coincidentally. There you so, go. So yeah, Yay. we would not have gotten there potentially had it not been for Lord. So so you know that's the big thing is. Thank yeah, you. yeah, take a bow. Thank you. Uh, I'll, like a lot of times you go to, you know, ghetto rate or ghetto rate, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> or you go to, you know. What was it, ghetto rate? Oh, I missed ghetto, it. Ghetto rate. <laughs> oh, that's what he thought you said. Oh, he said ghetto I was thinking in my head, like, how does he not know about ghetto rate? <laughs> I want the ghetto, ghetto <laughs> rate. Ghetto rate. Yeah, that's 11% lower, lower, lower fees. Lower yeah. fees. But they, they give you a piece of paper, and, and it's literally not worth as much as the, the piece of paper that is written on. Like, that that is just right. a piece of paper. Well, that, that actually leads into... Um, what's the difference between pre-qualified and pre-approved? Excellent question. One is worthless and one is real. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It yes. depends on the knowledge of that seller, because if the seller and the seller's agent don't know the difference, and it's yeah. been verified. Okay. Well, then you, okay. then you, you, right. need, you need a good tell us. realtor tell that us, knows tell the us. difference. Okay, so a pre-qualification means that someone can... The internet is fantastic. I'm not downing the internet, but... Al Gore would show up and bite you. <laughs> <laughs> some things you <laughs> need to have human touch. <laughs> He's out of order, no, she's good. <laughs> so people go online and they plug in their information as they see it mm -hmm. and they get a pre-qualification spit out from the information they put in right Debt yeah, so zero. Income one million dollars or twelve hundred. Guys, I'm approved for a nine hundred thousand dollar mortgage. <laughs> And i you know, this is one of uh, people make fun of me. This is one of my favorite sayings. People don't know what they don't know. Right. When somebody puts their information into a computer, they don't know what I know about what to ask them and how much they really make. It's mm -hmm. a, it's you would not even believe how many people have no idea what they make. Right. And I I, I find I just I like every day I talk to people. I'm like, um, so how much do you make? Salary, salary. Um, not really. Do you know what? I'm hiring. If you don't know. Can we take a vote? That's actually money. interesting. Let's can we go around the, the stable and ask everyone here if they know what they really make? Okay. I'll right. start with me. Absolutely. Do you know what you really make? Yeah. Yeah. Eric? I do my own taxes too. So. I, I, Not at the end of the year after like <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Say by November. If you've done your taxes, of course you know what you really I make. I abstain. But, so no. <laughs> I'm gonna abstain too. You don't know what you really make? Well, I did my taxes, so I knew what my taxes No, but just today. before your taxes, did you know what you really made? No. Right? Eric is a no. Omar? I'm go also going to abstain. <laughs> no idea. So we're at... I plead the fifth. Out of, out of three... Out of, think about this, guys. Out of six people here, four out of six people at this table, right, all professionals don't know what they actually make a year until after their taxes are done. Thank you, because yeah. that's my point. Mm -hmm. That's my point. And, you know... So that's the pre-qualification. That's the pre-qualification, and it could come from you know, all these different internet companies. Right. And really, if the if the if the agent is a good agent, they know. Right. They know this is so a pre-approval, and it matters where you get your pre-approval. Okay. A pre-approval is when the credit has been checked, income, assets vetted, everything. Ha that's the way I do my pre-approval. I want everything. I want to see mm -hmm. everything because again, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know that that 50,000 that you just deposited is a problem. Where did it come from? It can't just- Well, my money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. We had it under the mattress. Yeah. Mattress money doesn't work. Right. And there you are times- You have to season when, that money over three exactly, months. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you have a well-vetted storage facility <laughs> filled with gold coins that you swim in. <laughs> then banks that will recognize oh God, that. I see his IDs <laughs> diving in. <laughs> Then banks will recognize that as legal tender. So, and there have also have been times where I have been told that realtors that have worked with me have received my offer and accepted it, my, my pre-approval and accepted it because they knew that the deal was going to get done. Can somebody brush your shoulders off? <laughs> She's no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so basically, no, the I'm quality just, so of important. that pre-approval is very important. Right, and then that's also something that. You could, as a as a buyer, you could express and say, "Look, I this is a real pre-approval, or it's a real pre-qualification, yes. um, or actually pre-approval is better, but or it's a real pre-approval." Pre pre-approval so, is better, yeah. and I I stand by my pre-approvals. I don't put my name on something that isn't, and a mm -hmm. lot of people will like the you know like that throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not a nice way to talk about get a rate. <laughs> <laughs> so would you, still, would you say? That 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 so would you would do. you say that? Um, Anyone that gives out a pre-approval without talking to a client for more than five minutes, it's bullshit. Well, you have to get all the paperwork and all the stuff. And well, see, yeah, but a lot of people don't run that. 
A lot of people just yes. look at the credit, right? Yeah. You've had some of my pre-approvals that I got from other lenders when we so, first started working together. Yep. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to toot my horn anymore. You toot it. Toot it. Go ahead. We, <laughs> <laughs> we had an issue where I was given a pre-qualification. We'll call it a pre-qualification for a client. We made an offer. We had an accepted offer and we were working on it. And it pretty much just fell flat on his face. Well, I think he said, we he, didn't he say something like it went through underwriting and they said no? And then we brought it to you and you and said, I said, there's How did no you way get this? this even went to underwriting, hadn't filed taxes. Well, well, she was a, uh, can I say what she was? No. No. Yeah? Can't no. say stripper. No. No. Oh, God. It wasn't. It wasn't. Was she? But interesting. Oh. We'll talk about it later. So, um, hadn't filed taxes. Yeah. In years. Okay, so you can't get a loan without Hadn't filed taxes in years. And this loan officer said that they put it through underwriting, which clearly is a lie. Self employed. So, do you need to file your taxes to get a mortgage? You need to be up to date on filing your taxes. Okay. Is you're that saying no? That's not true. No? You disagree? Yes. There you, are entire programs out there for you investors as well who do okay. bank statement only loans. Yes. So you'll be in the fours, but you yes. can get a mortgage without having your tax returns filed. Yes. There is an entire. You can do a bank statement, and that's what we're program. looking into for yes. our, so our French overseas. Handy. You played yourself. Yes. So <laughs> wait, I have a so question. So that so that so actually the bank statement program is a non falls on that under non -conforming. the non conforming umbrella that. Is coming back now. I have a question, Omar. So mm -hmm. you do a ton of investments, and you're, you know, you buy the investment properties. You are an investment guru. What types of loans do you use? Um, for f standard fix and flips, you have to go through hard money or private money. But okay. non-conforming comes in when you want to buy a rental mm -hmm. and you have self-employment income. Mm -hmm. And I went through that. So traditional banks, I tried everything I could to get approved with the traditional bank, and it took me months and months of just going with it, and then at the end of the when it came time to actually get the loan approved, they, they would disqualify for 10 different reasons. Um, so I had to go the non-conforming route, and it's a completely different way of looking at uh, yes. statements, income, and yes. tax returns. Mm -hmm. can, can, we get, can we talk to, so it seems like a lot of the loans you do are real, like residential, personal home loans, right? Yes. So I'm gonna plug in here, and, and Omar and, and Eric can, can talk about this you know, in more length, but for all of you out there who are investors, right, who are not necessarily looking for these residential home loans, um, and who are those people who don't cheat on their taxes but maximize their tax savings and benefits based off of good accountants and the law? That's a very right? nice way of putting it. There are so many programs available that make more sense for you. So if you're looking and saying, no, I would rather have a 3.5% loan as opposed to a hard money deal or some of these other non conforming programs that are out there for us investors that are maybe 8%, 4%, 11%. Right, you, this is where numbers come in, and you have to actually vet your deal because sometimes it makes more sense to borrow money quickly at eleven percent mm -hmm. than to pay taxes on income that you could otherwise write off to get a loan at three percent. Because if your tax bracket's twenty to thirty percent, you're paying thirty percent tax on money to not borrow money at two to five percent more than an institutional loan. That's a good point. Without prepayments. So point. I think that may be a nice okay. topic yeah. to tune into in future classes. It's called Ask My Accountant. Oksana or has talk a about question. investments. Oksana has a question that goes along with that. And maybe Oksana you, the ice skater? Oksana. I'm not I I know. Know. Every Russian is not an ice skater. <laughs> 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 so, so, and maybe you, you three can talk to this. For an investment buyer in the progress of Chapter 13 payoff, knowing that they can't receive a conventional loan during that period, can they still receive hard money from a hard money lender? So chapter 13 payoff is bankruptcy. Okay. I'm assuming, right? Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's 11, it's 13, and 7. Yes. It's not, so, uh, chapter 7 wipes everything out. Chapter 13 is reorganization, and okay. you go on a monthly payment plan. So there's some type of bankruptcy there. Um, I would say that Omar and Nima, you guys answer this one. I mean, it depends on your credit score. Um, but hard money lending is going to focus more on the deal, the asset, and the numbers than they are on your personal finances. But if your credit score is tanking, then no, they're not doing financing. So yes and no. I agree with Omar, but typically once you file for Chapter 13, your credit score is trashed. But beyond that, I think that most hard money and I lend out, you know, even my own personal funds in hard money groups, and I know, you know, Omar is the VP of, a, of, of this capital group that does that. Why would we lend to someone who is comfortable going through the bankruptcy process or who alternatively still has the means or availability to file for bankruptcy. So amazing bank deal. Yeah. yeah. What good's an amazing deal if they then wipe out the debt that they owe us, they keep the deal. But great excuse, the hard money. they had a liver transplant, they were almost dead and they just can't, came back. 
that plus if the deal goes bad and it's a great deal, the hard money lender takes the deal. Unless they file for bankruptcy, then you're not, you're uh, from a legal standpoint, what are you gonna do? You can't go in and take the deal. It's but now in the bankruptcy court. They have to approve it. On. If it's under an oh. LLC, doesn't the hard money lender have protections to take it back without no. going through all that? The, look, there are of course certain protections, but if you throw that company into bankruptcy too, you've now lost control of it. Every transfer, everything that's done has to be done through the approval for the most part of a judge in the bankruptcy court and they're looking at all the assets and they're seeking to satisfy all the debt. So of course you have preferred debt, so more secure debt, but at the end of the day, you don't have the ability to swoop in and take that property. Maybe you wanna do a quick, you know, take the shares of the company. You can, you can argue that insolvency triggers it and you know, in your docs usually it says that insolvency or bankruptcy will trigger a default but it's all timing. If they file for bankruptcy before you have the ability to act on your own docs, you're now subject to the bankruptcy court. Your money's tied up for two to four years that you put into that deal. You're high risk. So basically to sum up, they both have different opinions. And I would say, depends on that hard money lender because Omar yeah. makes a case, Neiman makes a case. If that hard money lender really likes the opportunity, and looks at it as, ooh, if these people screw up, I can take it. Mm -hmm. They're probably gonna not listen to their lawyer as strongly as Nima is telling telling us right now not to do it. So I would say it could go either way. Because remember, some hard money lenders JV on the deal, so they'll partner with you and say, look, if your finances don't approve, we get we have the right to take the property. Yeah. JV. We should actually have one of our next talks to talk about the creative ways that you can protect yourself from this. because oh, you Joint venture, I thought you were gonna say. Well, no, they, one of them is a joint venture and what you can actually do, guys, remember, everything is as good as a contract that creates it. If one side goes bankrupt, you if it's contractually designed or there's language in it that says that if the other partner goes bankrupt, you have the right of first refusal to buy out their interest at a specific price, right? You're protecting that portion of the assets that you could be arguably a discounted rate. And the courts really have a tough time renegotiating contracts for people. So we, there's a lot of discussion and we can't get into that now because it's pretty complex stuff. So then maybe Oksana could go to a hard money lender who says no to her and suggest, hey, what if we JV on this project? Yeah. Maybe they would give her that opportunity. Sure, but remember guys, for the most part, a lot of hard money lenders, that's their business. Um, you do have some that like to go in as equity as opposed to debt, but equity has risk to it, whereas debt doesn't for them. And most, in my experience, hard money lenders don't deal equity with people until they have a track record. So, so you need to try, you need to be. We, yeah. So like the guys I represent, I, there's one in specific um, and what he does is he will do equity with you after you've done a couple really solid debt deals because he knows your performer, there's more upside in the equity. But if you're first time around, why would he take the risk? Debt isn't risk free, give or take a bankruptcy, but for the most yeah. part, debt has a certain rest of the shoulder. And even, okay. hard, even hard money, I'm sure you guys have experienced it. Sure they still have credit requirements, right? Yeah. They're lower than conventional loans, but I would have a tough time thinking that a hard money lender would lend to someone with a 550 credit score. Good point, thank you. <laughs> 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 All right, so two exciting topics. First, we still need to talk about interest rates, but before, yeah. before we get there, I think this is more exciting for people. I just wanna do a couple examples of scenarios where we as investors took advantage of some crazy loans. So Omar, I want you to start with your most crazy um, loan scenario. So preferably not hard money. Not hard money. So going off what Nima said, and you brought up a great point that it's you have to Thank balance. you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you have to balance there's a fine balance between how much you want to pay in taxes versus using that money to pay for an increased rate if you don't file your taxes and pay enough to get qualified for a conventional loan. Um, so I was in that position, self-employed. I thought I could go to a conventional bank and I had a two family in prime location that was fully paid off. I thought I could go to the bank and say, look, I need a, it's fully paid off, it's renting. I'd like to land credit on it. So I tried TD Bank, probably the worst bank I've yes. ever dealt with, <laughs> ever. And the um, reason I tried them is because I was told that they would give That's me a 90% <laughs> credit. People. So I gave them all the information. It took four months going back and forth. I had to have the house under my name and live there, all that stuff. Uh, I showed them assets and long story short, they just, they denied it because the income wasn't what they wanted it to be. The assets were there, I had properties, but they denied it. So I had to go the non-conventional route. And in order for me to qualify for non-conventional, I had to pay a significant tax amount for that year. One big check, it was painful, but I had to pay a significant so amount of an taxes. an example of what Nima said earlier, yeah. where you pay that money so you can get a better scenario. You get just the proof of the loan, yeah. And then yeah. even then, my rate was still significantly high. But the thing with that is, like people have to 
consider that you know you, you, you hear these big bank names oh you know these names they're jacks they are jack of all trades they yeah. don't they don't do primarily mortgages right. and a, a good point was you know some of these places are hiring younger kids on a salary they work nine to five they don't have their own houses that's exactly you know? it. Yeah. and and that's it. Yeah. you know people are trusting them with their financing and they're just kids out of college and they have no and, incentive they're not and they have no incentive, they, incentive. They, and they don't care so, so the broker i spoke to was exactly that he gave me up front he said that yes we can qualify you based on what you told me but as soon as the questions came up about well, underwriter said i can't do this i can't do this. <laughs> no and, so. and to me if you're a good loan officer you know ahead of time yeah there's no reason why it should have taken four months to determine what your income was yeah. Mm. Yeah. that's so I, I said that, but I meant more like websites and stuff like that. So I've experienced a lot with, and I don't know about TD because I haven't. I've had a lot of clients and people go through Chase, and I got to give credit where credit's due. They're they seem to be pretty pretty good. They have a good system in place. Um, and I don't I bank with TD, so I can't even speak about their mortgages. But I, I've heard very like very your lollipops, right? Uh, <laughs> reparations. So and inside joke. Sidebar. So um, for the bad for the don't back for know. the bad customer service. Don't want to know. So yeah, ultimately, uh, you know, I've heard really good things about Chase, and you know, a lot of people do like the institutional banks because if you do have the income and your credit's strong, yeah. it is cheaper. Yeah. They have less fees, yep. less points. Right, and at the end of the day, all that adds up when you're sitting at the closing table. It's not like you go and you buy, you know, a cup is five dollars, and you go there and you pay five dollars plus tax. You know, when you're buying your first house, all of a sudden you realize there's all these additional fees, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to come up with that at closing. And, and that, if you're dealing a mortgage, you can't just make that money up because if it comes into your bank account, it can mess up your mortgage. So there's a lot of complexity that gets associated with that, but. For the most part, I do agree with you, but I, I do I don't think that people should just write off big banks. There are still good programs no, and packages. You're right. so, so I think the rule of thumb is if your finances are W two, you report taxes, and you have a good income, go to a go to a big bank. Yeah. And if you if you're self employed and you have to get creative, then go to the capital. Go group. to Lauren. Yeah. Which the number you will see at the bottom here, 1-800-OMAR. I would go to the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the problem I have with the big banks, and you know, I, I've worked with Lauren for quite a while. Hold on, and Lauren is the big bank. She, she may look. Is. Oh, I'm not the big bad bank. I'm she, just. She, no. but oh, she left her Rolex in the car. Oh, no, There's yeah. a Bentley parked you, outside, yeah, guys. <laughs> she has a big yeah. firm behind you. So sorry. But I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just yeah. talking about like the Chase, the TD Bank, yeah, the Bank of America, those, yeah. those, or even institutional. Better.com, Ghetto Rate, whatever you want to call it. Ghetto Rate. So what I like about dealing with Lauren versus Chase is that you know Chase. Look, I, I just had a, a property that's actually closing within the next <laughs> maybe week or two, and Chase did an amazing job. The problem that I have with them is that when shit hits the fan and it's Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening no, or Sunday not. evening, you're not getting them till Monday. So you have nobody to call. And Lauren's gonna hate this, but you can call her and I'm, you can call her anytime. I've talked to her at 10 o'clock at night on a, on a Saturday. I've talked to her at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, and, and, you're right. And, and that's what sets her apart. One of the things that sets her apart from dealing with a chase yeah. is you're not getting anybody from there until 9 a.m. And if it's 6.01, yep. yep. you're not getting an answer till the next day. And, and yeah, far less right. creativity too. But, so. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say, but I'm also, Lucky for everyone I work with, crazy. I can't stop. Like I have to. She is. I have to. I am crazy. <laughs> I admit it. I have to find a solution. I can't sleep until I find a solution. It's my neurosis. My neurosis is good for everyone. I think that's why Omar's point was really, <laughs> you know, for those easy layup loans when you're on a W three, you know, your, your income is just there and you don't need creativity. Well, the only thing with that sometimes is that. You know, I've I have I've done a lot of SOS, pick up the ball and then run it in, um, when it's taking three four months and they're still waiting for an answer. You can't you like. Well, that was a nightmare right in the beginning of COVID. Yes. For a lot of people right. who were using yes. big banks. Yes, and I had to remember. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I just want to sleep for an hour. <laughs> it was yeah, crazy. It was insane. But I, you know, you just, I don't. To me. It's different for me because I take I take all of my stuff so ser like way too seriously. But and personally, and personally, yeah. So which is good, you know. It's you, so, especially in this market now. You're waiting four months. The rates are going up. Yeah. Well, yeah. perfect segue. Yeah. Let's talk about interest rates. The Fed is going to start raising interest rates in March. Yes. What does that mean for us? Does that mean we've missed the ball? Does that mean if you did not buy by now, pss, absolutely you were stupid? not. My opinion, no. 
It means the party's just beginning for us. Well, no. <laughs> let's say for the poor buyer out there. We mean you don't want. What does it mean? Me? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, first of all, no jet ski. Calm down. Rates are still Historic at historic low. lows. Yeah, but it's not like the two point five percent, which was ridiculous. Let's think about that. Let's think about it logically. How long? I mean, I don't know if if, if y'all if you remember. Did we talk about when um, a couple of years, a year or two ago, the Fed Fred uh, uh, um, reduces the interest rate to zero? Mm -hmm. Did they? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not We're your mortgage rate, but that's but the Fed rate. Do you know the phone calls? I wanted to jump out my window. How what many? Floor do you live on? <laughs> it's the first floor. The first so. floor. I'm just trying to change so like how a, bad it was. Yeah, I did like a tuck and roll. <laughs> yeah. So it would be um, really dramatic if you're in like a high rise. <laughs> so I had literally, I literally had people because I, I know I remember calling you and saying mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to throw my phone out. I'm, I'm done. Calling me and saying, I heard on the news that rates are zero percent. I want zero percent. Change my rate to zero percent. Logic, people, come on. Who? is going to lend you money zero. for zero percent. And I had to say that. I say, let's let's stop. Let's say you were lending. Let's say it's your money and you wanted to lend. Would you lend money? How do you say in business? You, rates aren't zero percent. By charging $35 for wire fees. <laughs> <laughs> but rates were close to nothing. I mean, I, I was doing 15 year, um, 1.875, 1. 1. 1.99. That's insane. Uh, 30 years in the it rates in the twos, but that was never for jumbo mortgages, right? Those are all for like, yeah, low hanging fruit, yeah. So, but here's the thing the so regular if folks. they raise the interest rates, right? And people have bought homes, they're not going to want to sell their homes because they don't want to go into another home at a higher interest rate. So, we're going to be stuck with this horrible inventory problem that we have now. Well, hopefully, not. It just means that the prices of housing could drop but if the I, demand is still there yeah it won't matter i mean yeah it's ideally when interest rates rise uh, home home properties are reduced however and I, I, this is probably better yeah. for you but supply and demand i mean if there's no inventory but it's also six it's or one half out. dozen of the other right you pay higher yeah. interest and a lower house price or vice versa Okay, well, it. let's see. My, my, I mean, you guys and, don't and seem yes, worried. I'm yes. the only one who's like, ah. Oh, so yes, I'll, in the I'll in the immediate, back. in the immediate, yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna sting. It's gonna it's gonna burn. Like the people that are in it right now, it's gonna level off, and rates are still incredibly low. So okay. let, let's just put it into perspective: a three percent interest rate versus a four percent interest rate. Thirty years on a hundred thousand dollars. What's the difference? Damn you! <laughs> it's like five hundred, five hundred dollars. No. 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 It's like like thousand. Oh, no. oh, over thirty phone. years. Thirty? No, I don't. I'm talking about the payment. Monthly? Month, the monthly payment. Monthly? It's like fifty dollars or something. Thirty, forty dollars. Thirty, forty dollars. Oh. So, and see, see, that's the thing where people get so hung up on rate. Oh. There, there, are, there are different programs. It doesn't get too complicated, but there are different programs. I was talking uh, about MI earlier, where people get so hung up on the rate. It's like a status thing. MI mortgage insurance. And mortgage insurance. Sometimes you could take a higher rate and buy out the mortgage insurance. Mm. No mortgage insurance. You buy it out, a one-time deal, pay a little bit of a higher rate. Uh, you're saving $200 a month. Do you need to tell your, your neighbor that you got a 2.875 rate? Or do you need to have $200 less in your payment? Right. Makes it like... But can we can we just jump into the MI quickly? I, yeah. I know we're, we're, we're towards the end, but I, I wanted to just jump into this because so I have a lot of people that want to go on FHA, but the problem with FHA, and correct me if I'm wrong, mortgage insurance never goes away on an FHA, correct? Correct. But you so can refi out of it. You, you can, can refinance out of it, but now you're refinancing two years down the line where the rate might be higher. Mm. So, And then you're also starting your uh, amortization, your schedule of payments back at day one. Don't mm. forget at the beginning, it's pretty much all interest or majority interest and low principal and it and then, changes yeah. over time. Mm -hmm. Which which of course is not ideal, but sometimes... If it gets you into a house, if if that's your your choice, then that's what you have. But I'm to saying do. there's a lot of there's a lot. You know what I like about you know a lot of banks will look at it and say we can only put you in FHA. Lauren has taken people that were FHA and said you know what if you do this this and this I can put you in a conventional. Yes. And the benefit of being in conventional is that your mortgage insurance is going to go away. You don't have to refinance in three years. Mm -hmm. It's going to save you money and in the long run. And it's, it, it presents a better offer. It, and you're, and you're, it, it's in today's market, and that's the other thing. In today's market, it goes cash, conventional, FHA. That unfortunately, you know. 
FHA, the problem is there's also FHA repairs. There's things like that that are required. So the people mandatory are, clause? Yeah, there's there, so they're less likely to accept an FHA loan than they are conventional, just like they would rather take cash over conventional. Got it. So, so if you can get into a conventional, it makes your loan or makes your, your offer that much stronger. So the moral of the story is the more educated you are as a buyer, the earlier you start, mm -hmm. the more people you talk to, the better deal you're going to get because someone like Lauren is going to take you from like a... Four hundred um, FICO score. No, a no. turn up into like a beautiful. <laughs> a turn up. What I got from uh, this was pay your bills when you're young from the start and keep your credit up, right? So Eric, you're now we're going through the. We're, Omar just told us his story about a mortgage. We need to. You got thirty seconds. Yeah, we no, got 30 you go. I, I I've never taken. An I did a countrywide home loan, fast and easy. Oh, fast and easy. Fast Back and in easy. the day. Back in the day, I bought a vacation house, twenty percent down. Hindsight, it was stupid, but I did it anyway, and it was all stated income, and it was easy, and I just closed. I didn't have to Fast and it. easy. Best loan I ever took. Yay. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, have, I have one mortgage. Lauren, so. this has been amazing. You are amazing. You guys are a lot of fun. Thank and you. thank you. We have to have you back another time to talk about all of this in more depth, because this seems like a topic that could go on forever, um, but that has a lot to it. Thank you guys for coming. We will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We are now on Spotify. So you're gonna go to Spotify and you're gonna listen to us as you drive in the morning. Or you're gonna go to YouTube and subscribe and you're gonna watch us. And if you visualize it, you can own it. Okay. See you next time. Bye guys. Bye bye. Hit that buzzer. <laughs> <laughs>